Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please hit like and subscribe and stick around. So in today's video, I am going to be showing you how you can create this design right here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of this style, this general niche. So if you're interested in learning about this, go ahead and stick around. All right, so here we are on Canvas homepage and uh, today's design, I wanna do a football design. So football season starts in early September. So right now football designs are up all over the place and there's a lot of cross niching being done uh, between the kind of coquette bow style and uh, football. And so there's tons of examples on Creative Fabrica. I'm gonna show you some and then we'll go ahead and uh, make our version of one together. So right now I am on Canva's homepage. I'm gonna start by just creating a, uh, a blank sheet. Um, so I'm gonna go over to the right hand side where it says custom size and I will be selecting 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That is the size that I use to design for all of my t-shirts. I also prefer to design for the darker color shirts. So I typically like to go ahead and just set my background color to black. That way I can optimize for some of those darker colors. Now we are gonna be making a football design that just kind of says football, football, football. It's kind of just gonna be repeating. Or actually we're gonna do game day. Let's do game day, game day, game day, repeating with the bow in the middle. There's a thousand versions of this. And so I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna show you how we can go ahead and find a really cool football bow and of course, you can do this however you like. So before I even start, I'm gonna jump over to Creative Fabrica and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm on Creative Fabrica here and all I did was search for football bow. So that's it, football bow. And as you can see, there are a lot of examples of football bows, tons of different styles, footballs that have bows, bows that look like footballs, It there's just, tons of different styles that you can do and they all sort of have that i guess coquette style design to them here's one that's kind of what i'm talking about where it's got the game day in the background and this one has a bow in front so we'll do a version of that and so you can do so many different things this one says touchdown season and it's it's got that that kind of curved style to it which we've done a lot of those kinds of designs um, we're going to do the one with the repeating text here, but there's just so many different styles and so many bows or footballs to choose from. So as you scroll down, you're just going to see all sorts of examples. And of course, you can pick any of these examples that you like, and there's nothing stopping you from putting up several different versions with different examples. Here's another one that has game day and it's got the bow. Here's some more game day. So those are pretty popular there with the bow. And so lots of those, this one says touchdown season in the back with the bow. So anyways, there's a billion different ones, obviously, that you can see and you can go through and put up your own versions. Whenever you're looking at these, though, just do be sure that you go ahead and trademark check everything to make sure it is safe. Game day is safe to use. And so you can definitely do that. But some of these other ones, just go ahead if you're going to use some of these things and do a trademark check just to make sure that it is safe for you to do but there's all sorts of just really cool ones and this is very very popular right now as football season is starting and so everything fall is going to be a lot of football so i'm just going to show you the one that i kind of just went and selected so i opened this one and this one was just football uh coquettes bow clip arts png and it had a lot of different examples of different football bows and different you know just like football things that you could use. And so I'm gonna go ahead and download this and we'll go ahead and, and select uh, one of those bows to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit download here and it will download it as a zip file that I will then have to open and select um, the file I want, drag and drop it into my downloads and then I can upload it on Creative Fabrica. You can see here, commercial info, full POD usage allowed. So this is totally safe for you guys to use. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, download this or I guess upload it and jump back over to Canva. Okay, so I am back on Canva and I just went ahead and uploaded uh, the designs that I wanted right here to my uploads. 
I'm going to go ahead and select this bow here. What I kind of liked about this one is it was a little bit different than a lot of the standard bows because this does use more of those pink colors as opposed to just browns. And as these shirts are most definitely made for females, using pink is a good choice as opposed to some of those browner colors, which you may think of as being okay for guys, but let's face it, I don't think too many guys are going to be wearing a game day shirt with a big bow on the front. So uh, you do want to kind of try to keep it uh, feminine and go with that uh, coquette style. And so I do like the pink one here, but of course you can use whatever you want. Um, and so what we're going to do is going to um, put some text behind it, pretty simple. Um, I'm going to have it say game day repeatedly, and then at the bottom I'm going to put social club, so I'm going to tie that social club into it, so that's another kind of trendy thing right now. Um, when I'm looking at fonts, I want something sort of clean, simple, easy to read. I don't want to do that grunge style because it doesn't go with this bow, so I do always want to make sure that the font that I choose and the graphic that I use look cohesive they look like they're going together so i want the styles to be somewhat similar so i'm looking for just a regular simple solid font that i can go ahead and repeat and then we'll go ahead and pick some colors off the bows and then down at the bottom in, in more of a scripty um, uh, style we'll go ahead and write social club so i'm just going to go ahead and pull up a text box by hitting t on my keyboard and i'm going to be doing this in all caps and it is going to say game day and we're going to go ahead and make it nice and big. And I do want it to be something I can see. So right now it's black. I'm going to have to change that color. I will be changing the colors more later, but I just want to make sure that it's something that I can easily see. And so now when I'm picking the fonts, what I want is something that is going to be a little bit more narrow so I can make it a little bit bigger. I want it to be a little bit more bold so that you can actually read it. Um, again, something clean, and then whatever font I pick, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate it all the way down. So after looking for a while, there's lots of different fonts that you can use. I went ahead and just picked one of my favorite uh, narrow, simple ones, and that's Lee Gothic. So that's one that I use a lot, Lee Gothic, because it's a nice bold one that's nice and narrow. So what happens when it's nice and narrow is... I can, oops, sold, sale, sorry. Um, I can go ahead and stretch it out like that. And so now you can see it's nice, it's big, it's bold. I wanna make sure it's nice and centered. And then all I do from there is I'm gonna hit Control D. That should duplicate it. And once I have duplicated it, I'm gonna take my copy. I'm gonna bring it right down underneath the first one, make sure that everything is aligned perfectly, make sure my spacing is good. Once I have it there, I let go of it, and then without hitting anything else, I'm going to hit Control D again, and it will duplicate it again and space it down perfectly. And then I hit Control D again, it will bring it back down, space it perfectly. And so now what I've got is all of these spaced pretty perfectly all the way down. And so that's great. Um, if I want to put it in the back now, I can just pick any one of these, hit Control in my left bracket. I might have to do it a couple times to go ahead and move the text to the back because obviously I want the bow in the front. And so it would be something like this. And the bow would be nice and big and bold. Again, the bow needs to go to the front. And the bow is going to kind of sit somewhere in the middle. It'll overlap a little bit with the top and a little bit with the bottom. And so something like that. We also want to go ahead and look at the colors. Now you can do all solid colors like this, and I've seen some that do. I like to do a little bit of a mixture with the colors with the different shades. So let's go ahead and say we keep this pink one at the top for game day. So let's go down to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and pick another shade, and it's usually going to be something off the bow. So we'll go over to text color, and I can use any of the colors that are already shown here, or I can go to add new color and use my little eyedrop feature. And that's cool because then I can go ahead and just kind of hover over anywhere on the design and I can grab that color. So I grabbed the color from right here on the bow there, and then I can do it again. So with the next one, maybe pick another color. I do want them to be pretty light because I still want it to show up on a darker background. So whatever color I pick can't be too, too dark. So something like that, maybe even a lighter shade if I come, there we go, over to that part of the bow there. And then maybe one more color here. 
maybe a darker pink. So just depending on what it is I want to do. And you can play around too to make sure that you get all the right colors. So there's a darker pink one there. And so there would be an example of how we can alter some of those colors. Now, typically I want to make sure that this is going to show up on a dark shirt, but if you pick bright enough colors, it can also look good on a white shirt. And if you can do it on both white and black, then that's awesome because you've killed two birds with one stone. So this is how it would look on a white shirt. And even this color is light, but it's still bright enough that it's going to show up on a white shirt. And of course, all of these are still light enough that they're gonna show up on a black shirt. So really this might look good on either. So I do like the way that that looks. And then this is how most of the designs look. I'm gonna do a little script at the bottom just to add a little social club to it. Now, right now it is filling up a good most of the page. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and left click in the corner, drag over everything on the page. That way it's all grouped together. I'm going to go ahead and move it up the page just a little bit, just to give myself a little bit more space. Maybe make it a little bit smaller again, just to give myself some more space. This way I have a little bit of room at the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and hit T on the keyboard again, create another text box. And then for this one, it's going to say social club. And so there is my social club you can see and this one i do want to go ahead and make a little bit scripty down here so do something a little bit different so there's lots of fun scripts that you can play with um i looked for a while and i always spend more time than i should on uh looking at different fonts just because i do think that the font really can make or break the design so after looking for a while i came up with one called amoriza amoriza there it is so that looks really cool. It's got that nice scripty look that you see on those social club designs. I'm going to put it at a slight upward angle. So right now it is at an angle of five, but you can do whatever you like. So something maybe a little bit like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this another color. I do want it to, again, pop against the darker color that I put here. But if I do want to put it on a white shirt, then maybe I want it to be something that'll show. Because now if I use a white color, it won't show on a white shirt. But if I was to go ahead and take that and use maybe that pinker color, then it can still show here and it will still show on the white. Um, I can always try and see if I can find another color that's bright and light. I'm just kind of looking over the bow to see if there's any colors that might look a little bit better. I mean, that looks pretty nice. Again, um, if I put it on a white shirt now, I'd probably lose the social club. Let's see. Yeah, I, I lose the social club a little bit if I put it on a light shirt. Um, but if I go too dark, then I kind of lose the contrast here. Now you could always go ahead if you wanted to go to effects and do something like a shadow. Um, and that can sometimes help if you're doing a shadow to make it show up a little bit better and I could pick sort of any kind of color I want for the shadow so something like this I'm going to make that offset really nice and small so if I did something like that now it would look okay on a white shirt because I do have it pop just a little bit and then if I go back to the black shirt here it still looks really nice. So I might actually go with something like that. Now, again, there would be nothing wrong with putting up two versions of the same design. So a lot of times it's a good idea to make two versions of the same design, one for darker color shirts and one for lighter color shirts. And all you would have to do then would be to duplicate this. So now I've got two versions of the same design. And then let's say I wanted this one to be my one for the white shirt and the one on top is my one for the dark shirt. Then what I could do would be to take the social club and maybe turn that into a darker color, maybe something really dark like the brown there. And then I could even take this color here and maybe make that one a little bit darker as well, just to make sure it is gonna pop real nice. 
And so something like that could be my version for a white shirt and that's going to pop a little bit better and then that's going to pop a little bit better. So again, you can always make two versions. If you're short on space uh, for uploads, like if you're using Amazon merch and you don't have as many slots, then it might be more advantageous to make one design and to try to make it work well on both colors versus using two slots to do one for a light color and one for a dark color. Um, if you have to pick one, I would always go with the darks. The darks are always gonna sell better than the lights. So if I was absolutely going to pick one, I would pick the darks. But sometimes having a light shirt will make yours stand out amongst the rest. Now on Amazon Merch, if black is selected as one of your colors, the automatic default will be to use black as the mock-up picture, which is why if you do a search, all of the shirts are going to show black, 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 because black was selected. So if you were the only one that didn't have black and white was your default color, it would definitely stand out. It would definitely make people look at yours. So sometimes it's worth doing one light version and one dark version just to get a little bit of attention that way too. So just some thoughts. But anyways, that's the design. Super easy, super fun, not trademarked. You can make a billion versions of this by just using different bows, footballs, whatever. Of course, you can change game day to anything else as long as you check to make sure that it hasn't been trademarked. So touchdown, football, you know, anything that you want. Be creative, okay? Try to make yours a little bit different than everybody else's because there are going to be a thousand versions of this. And if you want yours to sell, it either needs to be better than everybody else's or different than everybody else's. So just keep that in mind. When you're ready, by the way, to download these, um, you want to title each page separately. It's going to be a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and put game day and I'll put for dark, dark shirt, and then I'll do game day light. And that would be for my light shirt. And then I can go up to the top where it says share. I would come down to where it says download. And then I want a transparent background. And then I'm going to select my pages. So I'm going to do this one at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my dark page. Hit done, hit download. That will save it to your downloads and then it is ready to upload to whatever print platform you use, whether it's Amazon or Printful, Printify, any of those, Redbubble, whatever platform you use to print. Um, and again, it doesn't have to go on a t-shirt. You can take the same design and put it on a tote bag. That might be a really cool tote bag or pillows if you want like more football style decorations or a mug or stickers. So this bottom one could look cool as a sticker because it's already got that white background. So just things to think about. Don't necessarily limit yourself to just t-shirts, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry, I rambled a lot. Um, I do have more videos coming up for different fall niches, separate from simply Halloween, because I know we got a lot of Halloween stuff, but I do have some other niches coming up as well. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. And if you have any video requests, you can put that in there too. I'll see if I can add you to my list. And I hope you guys are doing really good with your sales and are looking forward to an amazing fourth quarter. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.